Welcome back my plant lover community and it is a pleasure to talk to you about how to care for the fiddle leaf fig. I know you have so many questions. Every time I talk about a fiddle leaf fig, everyone has so many extra questions. So today, I'm gonna give you basically the Bible, the full on understanding of how to care for the fiddle leaf fig. So I'm a big fan of the fiddle leaf fig. Some of you know it was the first plant I ever brought to my life it was the fiddle leaf fig. I named it Frank. Fiddle leaf fig, also known for you technical folks as the ficus lorata, just like the ficus family, can be a bit difficult, finicky to care for. You just gotta focus in on that care, get those things right, and it will flourish and it will love you, and so you can love it back, right? So when it comes to caring for it, the first thing you must do is you gotta get the light right. Fiddly figs indoors love bright and direct light. So you wanna just make sure that you're not placing it in a spot that's gonna to get too much direct sun. Eastern facing windows will give you that early AM direct sun, which is fine, but let's stay away from, let's say, your southern facing windows, your western facing windows that can give you that hot direct sun. Direct sun can burn the foliage of your plant. It'll look a bit, let's say, darkish brown, or sometimes it also can look warmish and, and, and orangish uh, at the same time. So you wanna stay away from direct sun. Bright indirect light, the bigger, the brighter the light that that plant gets, the bigger the foliage will be, and uh, the more possibilities you might see of new growth, new branches developing as well. Now, if you put it in a spot that's getting low light, signs that it is in a spot that is not bright enough for it is you'll start to see probably browning happening in the interior of the foliage. When it comes to water, the signs that it's getting too much water or being overwatered is that you'll see your leaves start to turn yellow. And if you're not giving it enough water, the edges will start to turn crispy brown. It's probably always better to underwater than to overwater. Just hear me out. When you underwater, the plant kind of tells you a bit that it needs a drink. You might start to see some of your foliage kind of wilt a bit or fall down. If those browning edges, those crispy edges start to form, that is something that you can later maybe cut out. But if you overwater a plant, the full leaf will turn yellow, die, and fall off of your plant. So you can save a plant that is being underwatered you can cut out those little crispy edges. You can water it and then it'll all start to bounce back. But if you overwater, those leaves will turn yellow and slowly fall off your plant. Overwatering can also lead to root rot. What is root rot? If you think you might have root rot, what you'll see is dark areas in your plants, dark spots that are forming in the interior of your foliage. If you're not sure if you have root rot, take your plant out of your pot, take a look at the roots. A healthy root system is when it looks like an El Dente noodle, uh, almost like off-white and sturdy, thick. If you have root rot, those roots would be mushy and black or brown and very soft. You can squeeze them with your finger and they'll be just mushy. So make sure you don't have that. If you do have root rot, what you wanna do is you wanna remove all that soil, you wanna cut away all of those dead mushy roots you then wanna repot it in fresh soil, and you wanna to wait to water it for about two weeks before you start the process again. So when it comes to watering your fiddle, you wanna make sure that you're doing it based on the moisture level of your soil. That is very important. It can't be based on a schedule. You're not gonna come back and water it every seven days. You're gonna water it when the soil, the moisture level of that soil, tells you to water it. So how do you figure that out? Well, you can either get a moisture meter, stick it down in the pot, or you can use your finger, stick it down in your soil. And once the top half of your soil is completely dry, that's when you're gonna water that fiddle. And when you water it, you're gonna do it nice and easy, slow and steady around the entire top surface of the soil so that all the roots in there get an opportunity to pull that moisture in. And you wanna water it until water comes out of the drainage holes and into a base tray. That is important. You just don't wanna pour just a little bit and hope that all those roots get moisture. You wanna make sure that you see that water coming out into that base tray. If that water sits in that base tray for about 10, 15, maybe 30 minutes, that's fine. But after that, if there's still water in that base tray, you're gonna take your plant off that base tray, dispose of that runoff water, and then put your plant back on that base tray. It's not just the watering of the plant that's gonna be beneficial. 
Given that this is a tropical plant, you wanna kinda of mimic that sort of same environment in your home that that plant is used to. So, humidity. Humidity is very important when it comes to your ficus plants. So either adding the humidifier and keeping that going in between, let's say 60 to about 70% near that plant, or you can mist your plant once a week, twice a week even, to just make sure that it is getting all that humidity and staying moist and staying vibrant in that space. So adding humidity will make sure that it can stay a bit more alive. Adding humidity is also a good way to deter any sort of pest. Millibugs love when your plants are more dry. So if you keep the humidity a bit higher around that plant, misting it, humidifiers will help keep pests away, but it'll also keep the life of your plant uh, a bit healthier and a bit more, I would say, shinier and, and, and more new growth developing on that plant. So when it comes to soil, you wanna make sure that you're wrapping your roots in something that's gonna help that plant thrive. So when it comes to the ficus, because it wants to dry up at least halfway, adding things that can help that soil medium dry up faster will be beneficial. Things like perlite, maybe a bit of vermiculite. I like to place a little bit of moss in my soil and have the rest of it be an organic potting mix so it can help keep most of it moist throughout the week and then dry up at a certain point in time so that I can then water it again. So when we're talking about soil, when we're talking about water, we're talking about light, the one thing that we're missing probably here is potting that plant. So when, you're, when it's time to repot your plant, you always wanna repot once you start to see roots coming out of the drainage hole. And when you see that, you're gonna then take your plant and repot it in a pot that is two inches in diameter, larger than the previous pot. That is important. Once you take it out, you're then gonna add some soil at the bottom of your new pot then you're gonna break up, gently break up the soil, spread out your roots, place it in your new pot, and then add fresh soil. Fresh soil is important because it can be one thing, it can be a way of adding new life to the plants, like nutrients, fertilizer, um, but it can also be a thing that can help uh, the process of still keeping any sort of pest down from your plants. Pests love to bury themselves in soil, so if you're always, at least once a year, replenishing, removing old soil and replenishing it with new soil, you can help yourself kind of alleviate having all of those pests kind of sticking around in your soil. You should also be fertilizing once spring and summer comes about. Using a liquid fertilizer and just using probably half of what the dosage is that they're asking to use and just doing that maybe twice a month versus every week is also important. Now, once you start to fertilize your plants or come growth season, you'll see a lot of new life developing on your plant. The more light you give it, the more growth you'll see as well. Once you start to see that new growth, it can be such a beautiful thing to just see those new leaves start to unfurl. But sometimes when you see new growth, you might see these little red dots, these little freckles that appear on the leaves. That's called endema. Now, endema is basically when, the, when you water your plants and those roots pull in too much moisture too fast and the cells in that leaf tissue start to burst. That's what that little red spotting is. Don't be too concerned with it. It'll probably fade over time, but to make sure that you can alleviate that issue, you might wanna water your plants slower versus rushing all the water into your pot. Just watering it slower can help now, when it comes to making sure that your plant grows and flourishes and becomes bigger and has even growth, you might wanna rotate your fiddle leaf fig every two weeks, once a month, come fall and winter. Making sure that you rotate it will make sure that every side of that plant has its opportunity in the light so that it can develop and grow. If you decide to never rotate your plants, what you'll end up seeing is your plant will start leaning towards the light, wherever that light is. Once you rotate it, it'll start to shift and become more upright versus just leaning to the sides. Now, when we're talking about routine maintenance, if you do have any leaves that are turning yellow or crispy edges, like I said, cut those out. If you have yellowing leaves, you wanna remove those yellowing leaves because that, that yellowing leaf is still pulling nutrients from your plant, so cut it off as soon as you can. If you're seeing any sort of dust or dirt, grime on your foliage, wiping down your leaves once a week, every two weeks is important. It keeps it healthy, it keeps more light penetrating your foliage if you remove that layer of dust 
And when you're doing this routine maintenance by wiping down your leaves, you're not only removing that layer of dust, but you're spending more time with the plant. You're in there, you're checking it out. Hopefully you're talking to your plant like I spend a lot of time doing. And when you're in there, you're able to look at what's going on with your foliage. And that's how you make sure you're not dealing with any sort of pest infestation. So now when it comes to propagating the fiddle leaf fig, the best way to propagate it will be to take a cut from an area of that plant where it's still green, where that branch is still green, kind of turning brown. You're gonna take a sharp pair of shears, you're gonna make your cut, you're gonna stick it in some lukewarm water, and over time from where that cut was made, you'll start to see roots grow. And you can take that cutting, once those roots grow to about four to six inches, you can then stick them back into the pot where you made the cut off that plant, or you can stick it into a new pot. Now, while we're talking about propagating, we're talking about making that cut off of your actual branch, that leads me to branching. I know a lot of you want to make your single branch fiddly fig more tree-like, where it has multiple branches growing. Well, there are three ways that that can happen. One, it can naturally develop new branches. That'll happen if you provide it with brighter light. The better the light, the more growth. Fertilizing can also help push out new growth, new branches. Another way that can happen is by taking the cutting off the top of that plant. Like I said, that cutting that you then have, you can then propagate. But from where you made the cut off that branch, from there, below the last leaf, you'll start to see new branches start to break out, start to make their way out of that plant. Depending on how much light is getting and how old, I would say, mature that plant is, you might see one new branch. You might see two, maybe three new branches make their way out and start to grow. But if you wanna try the last method, which is notching, you're gonna find an old leaf scar or above a node, and you're gonna score in at least an eighth of an inch into the branch. And then over time from that score, that's where a new branch will start to develop if you're lucky. This isn't something that always occurs. It's not gonna harm your plant, but it's a way to try to force out those new branches. So when it comes to making your branch a bit thicker, your base a bit thicker to hold the weight of your plant, you wanna kind of give it a little shake, maybe once a week, every other week. That kind of tells the plant, the base of that plant, that we gotta get thicker, we gotta get stronger to hold that weight. It's kind of mimicking what would happen outdoors if the wind was kind of blowing it and shifting it to side to side. So when it comes to having a fiddle leaf fig, it's a fig tree. So it produces figs, but not the figs that you probably think that you can pick off and eat. They're not really edible. You'll see them grow, which is great. Anytime you see a plant flower or produce fruit, that means that plant is having a great time at life, is loving everything you're providing it. Be very happy that that is developing, but I would suggest possibly not eating them. As they grow and develop, they'll start to dry out and you can just pull them off and throw them away. But seeing those figs grow is a sign that you are doing a great job caring for your fiddle leaf fig. So that's how you're gonna care for your fiddle leaf fig. I know, there's a lot of things there, but if you focus in on all the care, I know they're finicky, but if you provide them the right light, the right moisture, and the right amount of love, they will thrive in your home. Stay safe, and of course, stay wild.